A very warm welcome to Shomu's Biology Academy and this is going to be a zoology lecture series video for all of you. Three Kingdom concept of Carl Woos 1990. The three domain system was first introduced by Carl Woos in 1990. That's why it's called Carl Woos's classification. This classification system also is known as three domain classification because it divides the life forms into three domains. The three domains of Carl Woos's classification include archaea, bacteria and eukarya. Okay, so the classification system divides the life based on the differences in the 16A ribosomal RNA or rRNA structure, cell membrane lipid structure and their sensitivity to antibiotics. In this classification, Carl Woos used 16A ribosomal RNA as a chronometer because of it is universally distributed means it is present in all species. Present in all species. This 16 is rRNA. It is functionally similar in all organisms. It can change its sequence slowly. And its sequences can be aligned or matched up between two organisms. Domain Archae. These domain has following features. They are obligate or facultative anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes are organisms which can only live in environments which lacks oxygen. Lacks oxygen. Facultative anaerobes are bacteria that can grow in both the presence or absence of oxygen. The cell membranes are composed of lipids. Cell wall lacks peptidoglycan. The rigid cell wall provides shape and support to the archaebacteria. It also protects the cell from bursting under hypotonic condition. The cell wall is composed of pseudomerium, which prevents them from the effects of lysozyme. We know that lysozyme is an enzyme released by the immune system of the host, which dissolves the cell wall of pathogenic bacteria. It kills bacteria because it destroys the cell wall of bacteria. Right? But here they are lysozyme resistant. They do not possess membrane bound organs such as nuclei, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, lysosome or chloroplast. Its thick cytoplasm contains all the compounds required for nutrition and metabolism. They can live in a variety of environments and hence are called extremophiles. They can survive in acidic and alkaline aquatic region okay and also in temperature above boiling point they can withstand a very high pressure of more than 200 atmospheres they can withstand that much of pressure. 
they are indifferent towards major antibiotics because they contain plasmids which have antibiotic resistant enzymes the mode of reproduction is asexual known as binary fission archaea has three phyla such as uh, such as trinarchaeota eurarchaeota and kurakiota so first of all trinarchaeota they are tolerant to extreme heat or high temperature they have special proteins that help them to function at temperature as high as 230 degree celsius they can be found in hot springs regions with superheated water these includes thermophiles hyperthermophiles and thermoacidophiles eurasiota these can survive under extremely alkaline conditions and have the ability to produce methane unlike any other living being on earth this includes methanogens and halophiles coracota these are supposed to be the oldest surviving organism on earth candidatus coracium cryptophyllum is a species of the coracota domain bacteria they lack a nuclear membrane mitochondria golgi bodies chloroplast and lysosomes are absent the genetic material is present on a single chromosome histone absent so histone protein that is the important constituent of eukaryotic chromosome right so bacteria lack them the cell wall is made up of carbohydrate and amino acid plasma membrane acts as the mitochondrial membrane carrying respiratory enzymes they divide asexually by binary fission and the sexual mode of reproduction involves conjugation there are five phyla of bacteria domain first is proteobacteria their cell wall contains thin peptidoglycan layer so this is very thin peptidoglycan in the cell wall additional layer of lipids and sugar around the cell wall can be found lipid and sugar that's why this layer is called lipo poly saccharide so this layer can be found they are gram negative bacteria this type of bacteria is often harmful for humans and animals due to pro, due to protein that is toxin to, toxin is the endotoxin it, this is very potent toxin so this is harmful it is incorporated in the lipopolysaccharide so in this membrane this potent endotoxins are incorporated the example of proteobacteria is e coli cyanobacteria the example of cyanobacteria is photosynthetic blue green bacteria which produces oxygen gas these bacteria obtain their energy through photosynthesis they are ubiquitous found in terrestrial marine and fresh water environment eukaryotic chloroplasts are thought to be derived from cyanobacteria eubacteria these are gram positive bacteria 
they have a thick peptidoglycan layer very thick thick peptidoglycan layer and they can take gram stain they do not have outer lipid membrane lipid membrane they do not have example is staphylococcus chlamydias all members of this group are obligate intracellular parasites of animal cells that means they are organisms that cannot complete its life cycle without exploiting a suitable host if an obligate parasite cannot obtain a host it will fail to reproduce cell wall lacks peptidoglycan the example of chlamydias is chlamydia trachomatis that causes blindness spirochete most members of this species contain spiral shaped cells free living anaerobes anaerobes there some are pathogenic flagella arise from the periplasmic space between inner and outer membrane so cell wall has the inner membrane and outer membrane and in between this inner and outer membrane have the periplasmic space and flagella arise from this place from this periplasmic space and the example of spirochete is borrelia burgdorferi it is the causative agent of lyme disease domain eukarya these are eukaryotic cells with a membrane bound nucleus they lack peptidoglycans on their cell wall there are presently four kingdoms of eukarya such as first one is protista kingdom protista is said to be the most diverse kingdom because each of its members are so individual from each other if an organism does not belong any particular kingdom it goes into kingdom protista it is known as the odds and ends kingdom because the outlier organisms who are really the miscellaneous organisms are all placed in this kingdom protista example slime molds eugenoids algae protozoa etc fungi historically fungi were included in the plant kingdom however because fungi lack chlorophyll and they had a different type of cell wall so they have been separated from plants example is penicillium planti organisms in the plant kingdom differ from other kingdoms in that they all contain chlorophyll which is necessary to perform photosynthesis they are stationary and cannot move from one spot to another and their cell walls contain cellulose their cell wall contains cellulose these are mosses ferns conifers and flowering plants animalia unlike plants and fungi animal cells do not have a cell wall in addition with the exception of sponges this is the exception cells are divided into specialized tissue or organs animalia is the most diverse kingdom consists of so many different species varying dramatically from others example sponges worms insects vertebrates etc If you like our video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you get more and more of this kind of video in future thank you